My intelligence has been insulted, as me and my plushies have just seen a claymation Easter. A holiday special so bad, it put us in the mood for the old ultraviolence. This one is not directed by Will Vinton either. There's no such thing as an Easter carol, and the songs that people sing at church on Easter Sunday just don't count. So this one is screwed from the get-go. My only guess is at this point, the company found a sizable income from holiday specials and decided to chalk Easter off the list of holidays they could exploit. How bad is this one? Oh no. The question should be, how do you go from Claymation Christmas to this! We start off at the humble abode of Wilshire Pig, who is every bit as charming as the last time we saw him, as he tests out another insane invention on his cousin, a shark-proof suit. And before you can ask who would buy such a thing... Yeah, fail. Oh, by the way, I should probably let you guys know that uh, if you liked Sheldon Snail in the last episode, he's not in this one. Later on, while listening to National Furry Radio, I guess, Wilshire hears an interview with the Easter Bunny, and... Okay, I'm sorry, but this guy does not look like an Easter Bunny to me, okay? To me, this guy looks like an Easter Bunny. This guy looks like an Easter Bunny. Even this looks like an Easter Bunny. This guy looks like Squirrel Merlin from The Sword in the Stone. He's gonna teach me about animal life, not give me Easter eggs. And so, after discovering that there's a lot of potential to make money as an Easter Bunny, Wilshire hatches a nefarious plan to kidnap the Easter Bunny and take his place. And he does so by sucking him up a vacuum cleaner. And destroying his house in the process. I guess that's kind of funny. So with the Easter Bunny out of the way, the good citizens of wherever the heck we are decide to have a race to choose who will be the new Easter Bunny. Okay, you know, something's bothering me here. Remember what I said about Christmas specials and how they commonly fall back on two cliches? One being that Christmas is in trouble? Well, here we have a case of Easter being in trouble. So it's like they've stopped trying to be unique and just decided to be like all the rest. One more word out of you. I vacuum under the fridge. Don't worry, Mr. Easter Bunny. That's nothing compared to the bad taste I'm getting in my mouth. And so Wilshire shows up at a rabbit psychiatrist's office in a bunny suit, telling him that deep down inside he feels like a rabbit and needs his help to become one mentally. Okay, the bad taste just got worse. But seriously, up until this point I've bought talking dinosaurs, ice skating walruses, and anthropomorphic bells, but for some reason, even I don't buy a pig wanting to be a rabbit, so why should this guy? Only because I like you, you little pork chop. Right. My sentiments exactly. Okay, so maybe he doesn't buy it entirely, he's just playing along. So for the next chunk of the special, we see Wilshire getting trained to be a rabbit. I'll admit, this is the only decent part of the special, but as you can guess, it doesn't work out. And so, eventually, the doctor finds out about the Easter Bunny's kidnapping, and Wilshire decides to leave them both to the shark while he goes to participate in the big race. And from here on out, the special actually manages to be darker than the Halloween special that came before it. Oddly enough, I'm very sorry, but you're just not a rabbit. You let me in this race, or I'll have the ACLU on you so fast it'll make your head spin. Okay. <laughs> nah. I'll give him credit for that joke, but only for political purposes. So while that's happening, the two rabbits back home get eaten by the shark and meet up with Wilshire's cousin inside its belly. And now that we've established that in this world one can survive a shark attack without getting bitten, I gotta ask, What was the purpose of building the shark-proof suit to begin with? If they're still alive and perfectly healthy inside the shark, then it defeats the purpose! And so we follow up that bit of intellectual bankruptcy with some artistic bankruptcy, as we watch Wilshire cheat his way through the race to the sound of... Lowrider? Look, you can't just take a cool song like Lowrider and stick it in the middle of a show to give it credibility. Soundtrack choices have to make sense. It's all about continuity. He's not even in a Lowrider. He... He's not even in a Lowrider. He's in a giant freaking rabbit car with legs. Why a car with legs when wheels are so much faster? How much sense does that make? Really? 
Then when all hope looks lost for our indigestible trio and Easter will be ruined forever, the rule of the deus ex machina comes into play and our heroes hatch a plan to make the shark vomit them up by singing... Crappy lounge music. Again, it's too late to turn this into a musical. Why switch genres five minutes before the ending? Oh, what, they've got singing clams? Oh great, they've got singing clams. They're going all out here, folks. Then the shark does what I'm about ready to do and projectile vomits them across town where they conveniently land right in the middle of the stadium where Wilshire is about to get the Easter Bunny title. And then... Deus Ex Machina! Sorry, not good enough. This pig has wasted too much of my time. He's freaking bacon. This special is lousy. I mean, I give them credit for at least some creativity in the Department of Imagination, but the weirdness that I've come to expect from anything related to Will Vinton is on overdrive. And while I find that weirdness can be great when in concentrated small doses, this is just a tad too much. The only other thing I find likable is the animation. I think it's pretty clear that Vinton's crew got their craft down at this point. The problem is, while the characters have nice animation, I still don't like them. I find them to be quite ugly, on both the outside and the inside. And if I were Jesus, I would be embarrassed to be tied to something like this through any holiday. So where does this leave us with our good buddy Will Vinton? Well, sadly enough, it was pretty much downhill from here on out. While the 90s proved to be a pretty good time for the Vinton Studios, I personally never felt like the same magic was there again. In 2002, Vinton lost control of the company and he was dismissed. But the company seems to have been doing pretty well since then. They've renamed their studio to Leica, and they made Coraline, which was released last year and was pretty awesome. As for Vinton, he still does animation. He runs a new company called Free Will Entertainment. And while I've not seen any of their work all the way through, the clips on their website look like they have great potential. So, Will, if you ever by chance end up watching this, I want to make something quite clear. I can't blame you for any creative bankruptcy on behalf of the later specials. You didn't direct them. In fact, I bet I know what you said when you saw this one. What was that guy thinking of? Something like that, right? I just wanted you to know that. And I still think Claymation Christmas is your best work yet. So, fellow animation lovers, if you see this DVD on sale anywhere, I would still recommend you pick it up. Even if two out of three specials on the disc aren't worth the money, the one that is worth your time is certainly worth paying full price. And with that, I bid you adieu. The year is still quite young, and this is Jaime Tude saying, May your upcoming year be full of many great holidays. See you next time. Happy Easter, everybody. After Will Vinton's Claymation Christmas, I find... What the freaking heck is my line? Please don't make this even more annoying by making you... Don't make this a musical. Don't make this even less annoying by making the moan. I know what I'm doing here. Don't make this even less watchable than by making the Alright, we have something that's not watchable in take four. Alright, go ahead. Oh, wait, you're recording? No, I'm not. Go ahead. Yes, you are. I see I'm you lying are. so you can do the fing shot. Okay. All you need are explosions, man. <laughs> and boobs. <laughs> okay, we got that we, on we, camera. Yeah, we got that on camera. For the record, he was talking about Michael Bay movies. He has no interest in explosions or boobs. For that matter. I have an intrad. Okay. Well, yeah, okay. let's not go there. My sentiment. I believe. All right. What's the last one? Can't remember. All right. Cut. Print it. That was excellent. Okay. Nailed it. What was that guy thinking of? <laughs> <laughs>